So this is a common one. You've made an offer on a property and you've got the surveyor around to do the valuation and he's come back and said that the value of the property is lower than the offer you made. So what to do about it? That's what we'll cover in this video after this intro. I'm Tim Hill, internet entrepreneur, property investor and author of How to Really Buy a Property. No. It's not one of those books that goes on and on about how you can make millions investing in property and all you have to do is go on my course to learn the secrets and then you go on my course and you find out that you have to go on my master course to learn the real secrets. None of that. If you have decided to buy a property, no matter what your motivation, then how to really buy a property is the smart way to do it and it will save you time, money and stress. Okay, so. First, it's important to understand how a surveyor actually works when they're doing a valuation. So let's say you've made an offer on a two bedroom flat for $270,000. Uh, so the surveyor has gone around, he said, OK, the flat's all right, you know, it's uh, in good condition. Uh, the building's not falling down. Uh, and most importantly, the property exists. So uh, how much is it worth? Well, the surveyor will normally get on the phone to a few of the local estate agents and say, I'm in a two bedroom flat, Victorian conversion, second floor, conditions all right. Have you sold anything recently? And if you have, how much did you sell it for? Now, in a rapidly rising market, and this is specific really uh, to the springtime market, very common in the springtime market, the market moves up. Uh, and uh, if he calls some estate agents, say some quiet ones, don't sell much property, They'll go, oh, well, you know, in January, I sold a two bedroom, similar, very similar in a Victorian conversion, 250,000. Calls another estate agent and they go, yeah, yeah, I, I sold one in December. I got 245,000. Uh, so then the surveyor's thinking, well, I can't say that this place is worth 270,000. And he'll put the value as, say, 250,000, uh, what they call a down valuation, uh, a terrible curse, because now if you're borrowing money, the lender is going to say, well, I'm not going to lend you more than that property's worth. If you stop paying your mortgage uh, and I have to take that property off you and sell it myself, I might lose money. All right. What to do? Uh, first of all, you know, it should be clear to you, you didn't go out and buy the first property that you saw. You did your research. You've looked on, you know, the Internet, on places like Rightmove to see what kind of properties were available for what sort of price. You've viewed properties. You know what you can get for your money. And that is why you offered 270000 You know that you can't get that kind of property for 250000 at the moment. Uh, now, prices might slide back a bit in the summer. Or they might not. They might just keep going up. But you can. It's your decision to buy at a particular point. So how are you going to persuade the surveyor otherwise? Now, in all cases I've seen, there is an appeals procedure. Okay? There's no point you going, oh, surveyor down valued it, I'll have to go and look at something else and just find you're in the same situation because you still haven't paid 270,000, you just lost the money on the survey. So uh, <clears throat> the thing to do is give the surveyor the right comparables. Comparables are properties that have sold recently or are under offer for a similar price, similar properties at a similar price. That's what the estate agent did when they phoned around, but it's all a bit luck of the draw. You know, it depends who they call, depends how far back those properties went and when they actually sold. The surveyor's trying to get recent stuff, but, you know, he might call five agents and thought, oh, sod it. You know, I've called enough people and I can't find anybody who's selling at 270000 so, quite literally, uh, I go round to the estate agents in person. I don't try and do this on, on the phone or as email because trying to talk to an estate agent and ask them to give me details of something which they've recently sold, a two-bedroom Victorian for 270000 there's nothing in it for them. Uh, so, the, the, the key time I find to do it is in the mornings. In the mornings, estate agents can be fairly quiet. They can be a bit bored. They, you know, I talk to somebody. <laughs> so go around there and that's when, you know, you'll be able to have the chat with them and you'll actually be able to walk away with the property details. And 
uh, I would be looking to get hold of six, if I can, six properties that have recently sold, similar properties that have recently sold at that price. Then I can go back to the surveyor and go, look, here are six properties. Here are the agents that sold them. Here is how much they went you know, under offer for. So definitely two bedroom Victorian conversion flats in this area are selling for 270000 And, you know, that's it. The surveyor just wants to cover his back. Uh, he doesn't want to say to the bank it's worth 270000 and it's not. And then he's in trouble later for overvaluing. So he does his down valuation. You cover his back for him. Then if the, the bank ever gets a bit angry and says, hey, why did you say 270000 He can say, look, there were six flats that all were similar, that were all under offer for around that figure. So he's covered. You've done it for him. You've done, you've done his job for him after paying him to do his job. But hey, uh, now that's what to do if you're in that situation now. Uh, my advice, though, is not to let yourself get into that situation. Uh, it's actually to do what I just said, but get three comparables uh, before the surveyor goes to value the property. So he's covered from day one and you don't have to go through this loop. If you're trying to persuade a surveyor to go up on his valuation, that needs a lot of persuading. And that's why I'm saying six comparables. But if he's just going in for the first time and he needs just to like some kind of assurance that he's going to value at 270,000 and you've given him those three with the details of the agents that, that were uh, selling them, then his back's covered from, from day one and he's not even going to start getting a bit, you know, worried. He might phone the agents just to double confirm that you haven't just picked up some property details to prove it. As long as those properties are under offer, they don't need to be at contract exchange. Uh, as long as they're under offer, that gives the confidence that you are paying the right price and he should value at that price. And that's it. That's all for this short video. There's much more information in the book, How to Really Buy a Property. As always, if you found this information useful, please remember to subscribe, to share, to like, to do all those social media things. It all helps other people who need this information find it more easily. If you've got some specific questions which you'd like me to have a go at answering, please put them in the comments below and I'll try and get to them. And in the meantime, good luck with your property purchase.